Hi, and thanks for joining. In today's video, we're gonna look at a few bugs in Autogen Studio, and more importantly, they're not showstoppers, and so we're gonna see real quick how to move past them and not spend frustrating time dealing with bugs. So um, the clips uh, that we're gonna look at in this video, I was recording a different video yesterday that I've already shared on the channel. While I was recording that, ran into several user interface bugs in Autogen Studio, and again, found some simple ways to work through them. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at those. Thanks for joining. Got a brand new Autogen Studio container running on my Tanji Kubernetes environment here. Just spun up today. I like to spin new ones up of these. Good and bad, sometimes we do daily builds. So they can be a little alpha-like experience, but they're always building new stuff into this Autogen Studio interface. So let's go ahead and we'll create couple agents. We'll create an agent for each of the different models. So first, let's go ahead and create a new agent. And I want to call this one form 13 b assistant. I'm just going to say terminate just for this. And I don't need a system message for now, just for this quick test. We'll just focus on adding our model. And now we have that model set up. So now we have our agent specification. And I've got that agent defined. I can go into my workflows. We'll create a new workflow. We'll click on our receiver. And then you notice it's, it's going by default to show the most recent assistant in this window at the bottom of our agent specification for our workflow. But you notice the settings don't match that. By default, it's going to load up this primary assistant settings. And it won't replace this unless there's a change here, an on-change event. So I have to actually toggle to a different assistant down here and then toggle back to create that on change event so that those settings that we created in that agent before are applied and I thought I had set that to what did I say terminate this is I'm going to set that to terminate and which automatically creates that system message for me here and interesting when I set it to terminate it looks like it replaced the other settings back to my primary assistant so Looks like a little bug for them to work out. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that so that way I can reapply my Llama well, 213B settings. And that's interesting. Now it, it still says terminate in here, but it didn't change it. It's a new project. There's some definitely some kinks to work out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just leave that as is and go ahead and just paste in this other system message here. So that way I have used this before. So I know it's pretty effective. Somehow it's the, the settings keep getting reapplied. So let me go back to primary assistant. It's probably maybe because I uh, toggled that terminate. Let's go ahead and type in the system message here and look at that. As soon as I change the system message to this. So that's definitely buggy behavior. I'm going to do something a little bit different here for now than while well, they work out these kinks in the system. Let's go back again to reset this settings. And instead of terminate mode, let's just go to always to ask for that human input. And once again, wow, as soon as you change that box or when I change the system message to this value, it completely overwrote all my files. So that's, you know, Fairly significant. It's not always like this. They're doing new builds, I think, pretty much on a daily basis, it seems like, or at least very frequently. And I, I've been through some different builds that didn't have this behavior, so I'm sure they'll work out these kinks. But I'm, I'm going to show you this now so you understand what working with Autogen Studio at this very early stage does involve some kinks, and you will need to think about how you're going to accommodate these. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to leave this here. Now... This human input mode says always, but I don't I know what's actually happening behind the scenes. You're going to have to look at the code later and check this out. Because as we see, when it, when it loads showing something, like it'll load showing the, with this replace our existing agent with the most recent agent, but it doesn't load with those actual settings. It requires the on, on change event to actually apply. So I don't know if this is actually set to always terminate. It may just be because I left that there previously. And when I applied this, notice it, it did not uh, properly apply my model. So I'd have to reapply the model. Now, if you bypass the GUI and you just go with Autogen Framework, my experience with that so far is it's a bit more stable. 
right? There, I think there's a lot more focus on making sure the core framework is working properly and the GUI is, is this nice thing, but it is reasonably less mature and, and has less attention than what I found the actual libraries themselves to be. For the rest of these, we're not even gonna bother making an agent. We're just gonna go ahead and skip into customizing the agent here on inside of the workflow context. Now, when you change the agent specification in a workflow, it does not go back and change the agent itself. So you can customize, you could think of an agent as, as a template of values, and you can customize that on a workflow basis without changing the template itself. And then we'll see the new workflow created. And now we can go into the playground. I can create a new session with our 13B workflow. We'll go ahead and create. And we'll say, can you show me a basic on the world function? Point here is not to, we're not testing the, the capabilities of the model now. We just want to show that we connected it to our Llama 2 13B model, and that's working now. And again, while it's thinking, we only get this, this little busyness indicator. And if you want to see what's happening behind the scenes, if you're you go back to your command line from wherever you instantiated. Ah, and so I think now it is asking for user feedback and we can see here a, another flaw in the UI. The UI doesn't apparently handle user interactions. It makes sense why the default settings on this are, are never ask the user because I think you have to go to the terminal. Can you show me and provide feedback to user proxy? Press enter to skip and use auto reply or type exit. So you gotta go back to your terminal, no human input received using auto reply. Okay. And we got a reasonable response here. So now we've seen some of the bugs that are at least in the current version of the time of recording, a little bit about how to deal with those. Kind of my takeaway from that is at, as of this moment, it doesn't appear to make sense through the Autogen Studio web UI to even really mess with the agents themselves, but really just on a workflow by workflow basis to define the agentic behavior you want associated with that workflow because there's a uh, time of recording some bugs in that ability to apply an agent template to a workflow. So easy enough to work around if you know what to expect. And it is expected, right? This is a really cool project. It's open source, it's very new, and, and we're using the daily build. And so not a, from a buggy behavior standpoint, definitely within the range of what's expected and, and not too bad for, uh, for an early stage project like this. So thanks everybody for joining.